a social, genial gentleman, fond of company and a glass, who invites his friends at night to refresh themselves with beer, but has in the room, besides barrel and bottles, a table suitable for gaming, together with eleven packs of cards and two boxes of chips, one containing eighty chips and the other three hundred, and a memorandum book with names and numbers entered in it, and whose guests, or some of them, retire hurriedly under the bed on being surprised by a visit from the police at one o'clock in the morning. Hello, True Crime Stories family. Welcome back. Buckle your seatbelts because you're in for a crazy ride. Alex Murdo had his own gentleman's paradise in the low country, in the middle of nowhere at Moselle. He chose the perfect secluded location to hide his criminal activities. Moselle is a massive farm with a guest cottage, equipment shed, fish pond, shooting range, kennels, plane hangar, airway strip, and a private plane Paul told his friends was used for drugs and strippers. The property boasts over 2.5 miles of river frontage, offering freshwater fishing, kayaking, and abundant deer, turkey, and waterfowl populations. You could go to Moselle and hunt, fish, practice shooting, watch strippers dance, party, buy drugs, or get drunk and gamble illegally. Five NFL players were suspended and cut for illegal gambling. Illegal gambling is a serious crime, and those caught are used as an example. They end up with serious penalties, or even jail time. Alex Murdo has an addictive personality, although he still has addict tendencies. He was a functioning addict for over two decades, but his greed and addiction to having money led him to open an illegal gambling den. According to Gangster Report, Alex Murdo led a drug, prostitution, and gambling rackets empire before his wife and son died. The Walterboro Cowboys gang's muscle Jerry Rivers oversaw security at the gambling den. Racketeering is a type of organized crime in which the person set up a coercive, fraudulent, or otherwise illegal coordinated scheme or operation, a racket, to repeatedly or consistently collect a profit. Alex and the Cowboys gang operated an illegal gambling den at Moselle to scam people out of their money. They were running schemes on people who went to the den. Alex also preyed on the people who he invited to gamble because his intention was to steal their money. He was committing highway robbery on the people at his gambling den. Gambling den operators usually get their victims trapped by gambling debts and threaten financial ruin if they don't do dangerous or illegal things for them, almost like a loan shark situation. When one of Alex's scams got slow, he created another scam to steal money from other people. It's possible that Alex's gambling den was operating during the pandemic when the courts were slow or shut down, and he had to wait longer time periods to pocket settlement money that was supposed to be paid to his victims. I'm surprised Alex didn't get any PPP loans from the government. The PPP loans attracted a lot of scammers during the pandemic. The people at Alex's gambling den were swindled out of their money. They always left broke or in debt, forcing them into a vicious cycle of using credit from Alex, although it came with a high interest rate. If you didn't have much money, it was okay. You could just place bets on the house, and Alex would issue you credit, let you borrow money to play with, but in return you had to pay it back with a high interest rate that was through the roof. If you didn't pay up, you could die. Alex could be responsible for more deaths or putting hits on people for owing him money. If Alex could off his own family, I don't see him having a problem with taking the life of someone else over money. It makes me wonder if Maggie and Paul were the only lives he took, or could it be more people that we just don't know about? Alex and the gang invited people to gamble at the den and let them go home with their winnings the first time to make them want to come back and try their luck again. However, when they came back, they spent large amounts of money gambling but they were not allowed to leave with all of their winnings this time. Everyone had to pay the house, house fees, on their way out, and if you refused, you had to deal with the cowboy's muscle Jerry, head of security, who is a big, tall, scary-looking guy. House fees is a certain percentage that a person has to pay the gambling den operator. Alex is a greedy money addict who has a history of getting high, scamming people and stealing their money, so he looked at the gambling den as an opportunity and another stream of income. He built an empire out of illegal gambling, making millions. Alex is always scheming, plotting, and preying on people even in prison. He is a very calculated person that plans and creates plots for his victims long before he commits the actual crime. What you doing? Uh, nothing. I'm in the bed in Charlotte. Am I waking you up? No, it's not. It's only nine o'clock. It, it's nine o'clock? Yeah. Hey, I hit nine out of eleven games on um, Sunday on the pro games. Well, I missed good. the Eagles. 
and I'm Mr. Steelers. The Eagles were three and a half point favorites over the Giants, and they lost. And the Steelers were four and a half point underdogs to the Bengals, and they lost by 20. But I hit nine out of 11. That's pretty damn hard. Yeah. I won like six suits, four B sticks, a uh, bunch of crackers, and cookie, you know, a bunch of canteen shit. Well, that's good. It was like 13 I was playing. Everybody put in something, you know? All right. I won 13 things, so. Alex likes to bet on sports. He is still betting on games from prison for food and commissary items. With all the money and power his family had, he could have opened up his own legal casino and became a billionaire. But nothing Alex does is legal or makes any sense. He was a drug addict that spent large amounts of money on his own pill habit, Uncle Eddie's pill habit, and the Cowboys gang drug operation, but he also lived a lavish life that was above his means. He spent over $9,000 to purchase a rifle for his son Paul to hunt hogs with. Gambling dens can be an indistinguishable place where people play slot machines, bet on deadly games, blood sports, and card games. With the dog kennels at Moselle, I hope Alex wasn't betting on dogs, if you know what I mean. These gambling dens were not only host to illegal gambling, but a hub for a variety of other criminal activity to include drug trafficking and unlawful possession of firearms. Numerous crimes have been linked to illegal gambling operations. The owners of the business or house, Alex Murdo, and employees, the Cowboys gang members, who are doormen, security, and bankers. They also audit the machines and collect the money. The drug dealers and pimps operate within the dens, providing drugs and strippers at the gambling dens for attendees to purchase. Gambling dens are often found in a place that probably overlaps with a bar or a legitimate businessman's social club. It's also a common source of income for organized crime groups, such as the mob, the mafia, and other criminal gangs like the Cowboys Gang. Illegal gambling dens are often located inside small businesses, inside houses, apartments, or outbuildings in residential neighborhoods. It's common for gambling den owners to pay rent in cash to the owners of these properties, and in some cases, a percentage of the profits to cast a blind eye to all the foot traffic. These establishments are equipped with electronic gambling machines, which are programmed with several games of chance, such as poker, blackjack, keno, jacks, or better. Most locations of these establishments are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. These gambling dens make thousands of dollars a day. The main draw to illegal gambling establishments is drug use and sales. It's rare to have a patron who does not use or sell drugs inside these locations. The people selling drugs inside may be employees or independent drug dealers. It is common for employees, gang members, to hand out small amounts of drugs and comp customers to keep them playing and coming back for more. When investigators get a tip about an illegal gambling den, they normally shut down the operation and raid the illegal gambling den, confiscating machines, drugs, guns and money. Then they arrest everyone there. How did investigators miss this? Alex could have received felony charges and jail time if he was caught operating his illegal gambling den. He could have gotten his license to practice law revoked too. If Alex was caught, he would have been charged with conspiracy, operating illegal gambling businesses, having drugs on the premises, possession of intent to distribute, drug distribution, and drug importation. The maximum penalties for conspiracy charges is five years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. For illegal gambling business charges, five years imprisonment, and a $250,000 fine. For maintaining drugs on premises charges, five years imprisonment, and a $500,000 fine. For drug distribution charges, life in prison with a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years, and a large fine. Illegal gambling is not taken lightly. Five NFL players were recently suspended or cut for illegal gambling. The NFL suspended three players, and released two players, including four from the Detroit Lions, for violating the league's gambling policy. They were caught placing bets on football games. Lions wide receivers Jamison Williams and Stanley Berryhill each face six-game bans per Rappaport, while wideout Quintez Cephas and defensive back C.J. Moore was released. Washington Commanders pass rusher Shaka Tony also is suspended indefinitely. Alex got away with running his illegal gambling den, but he still has two pending drug charges that he will have to appear in court for in the future two conspiracy charges relating to the supply of opioids alongside Cousin Eddie. A Cowboys gang member told the New York Post, I'm going to tell you something. Alex Murdo is running half of the drugs in this county. 
Alex took advantage of Cousin Eddie's drug and money problems, using him as his drug pipeline. Uncle Eddie was the middleman for Alex and the Cowboys gang. Alex wrote checks to Uncle Eddie, and he went to the bank and cashed the check and got the money to complete their drug transactions. Uncle Eddie then paid the Cowboys to get the drugs and distribute them. He kept a pill stash for himself, and then he gave Alex his pill stash. Alex financed the Cowboys' drug operation, and Uncle Eddie was like the manager. He did all the dirty work for Alex, making sure the drug operation was moving smoothly, and everybody got their money and drugs. The indictment stated that between October 2013 and September 2021, Murdo and Smith, along with persons known and unknown, conspired to buy and distribute oxycodone. During that time, Murdo provided Cousin Eddie with at least 437 checks. During Alex's trial, his defense suggested that a local gang, the Walterboro Cowboys, could have been behind Maggie and Paul's deaths. Defense attorney Jim Griffin suggested to jurors that Cousin Eddie was skimming money off the top of payments meant for the Cowboys for narcotics, suggesting they were out for revenge. Alex claimed he had no idea where his pills came from, but a Cowboys gang member said he was running half the drugs in Colleton County William Cox, a.k.a. Wataz, was jailed alongside gang leader Kiri Broughton in November 2017. During the trial, Alex's lawyer wanted to know why none of the DNA from the crime scene was cross-referenced with that of cowboy gang members. The cowboys have been operating in Colleton County since around 2012. They are described as the most violent gang in the area. They wear stars and stripes bandanas over their faces armed with all kinds of guns. They are a branch of the Bloods, a primarily black street gang founded in Los Angeles in the 70s, which has proliferated throughout the United States. The Cowboys operate in an area where guns, drugs, and moonshine have been running since the days of Prohibition. The gang leader Kiri Broughton, a rapper who calls himself K. Blocka, appeared in a 2013 rap video for his song Can't Let You Take Me with an American flag bandana over his face, making trigger-pulling gestures at the camera. In August 2022, on the same day Alex was indicted for the deaths of his wife and son, two high-ranking Cowboys, Jerry Rivers and Spencer Roberts, were charged with drug smuggling. South Carolina Assistant Attorney General Creighton Waters said that Murdo was laundering money through Smith and his cowboy accomplices. Misappropriated money flowed from Alex Murdo various ways, Waters stated. A lot of that went through Curtis Eddie Smith, and then they continued downstream to other accomplices who helped cash and launder that money. And that would go through Spencer Roberts, and Mr. Rivers was one of those. Locals speculate that Alex's alleged drug operation was bigger than anyone realizes. A Charleston law enforcement source familiar with the case said the Cowboys gang and other local criminals, with their proximity to the expressway I-95, long a conduit for drugs and guns runs from Miami to New York, this may play a bigger role than anyone on the South Carolina coast know. There's still a lot more to come out, and a lot more surprises. I'd bet my life on it, the source said. I ain't done nothing, Rivers told the Post while sitting on his porch wearing an ankle monitor after having had to post $150,000 bond. I've been railroaded. Rivers told the Post he was railroaded in the Murdaugh-related charges. It's bullshit. One Cowboys gang member with the letters COW, for Cowboys, tattooed across his throat told the Post on the rundown deck of a modular home. He did not want his name published because he was recently released from prison. The gang leader Kiri Broughton was jailed for nine years on organized crime conspiracy charges in 2017, along with seven other gang members. Prosecutors said the gang leader had participated in an attempt to take someone's life in November, 2015, among other charges. One of the Cowboys gang members said, They, the cops, want to get the Cowboys' name in there to muddy the water of the Murdoch case and get everyone to think we done took the lives of those people. Maybe look at some of the corrupt sheriffs here instead. A lot of good people are going to go down with Alex Murdo, said a Hampton County source familiar with certain aspects of the investigation. A lot of them had no idea what he was really into, and they got involved with him in small ways that could end up really hurting them. Fitz News went through Beaufort County public records and found out that Alex and Barrett Bulware, who died in 2018, co-owned several suspicious properties along the waterways of St. Helena Island. They own tiny lots of land ideal for drug smuggling lookouts or offloading locations. It reminded some people of the legendary Operation Jackpot, which involved gentlemen smugglers from South Carolina, accused of smuggling 347,000 pounds of marijuana, 
and 130,000 pounds of hashish into the U.S. through the marshy channels and inlets of the coast from 1983 to 1986. Scott Sanders, 64, a former tomato farmer and shrimp boat owner who worked as a real estate agent on St. Helena's Island for 23 years, lives at the end of a long dirt road near what's called Land's End on the island. He said he knew Bullware, as well as some of the smugglers from Operation Jackpot. Access to the islands, which are sometimes referred to as fish camps, is only possible by boat. He said, I knew Barrett. He was a real opportunist, Sanders told the Post outside his home. He was a fisherman and an entrepreneur, I guess you could say. But I don't think he and Murdaugh were doing any drug smuggling. Those days have been over for a long time. You don't need to import bales of marijuana anymore. You can just buy it from Colorado. Sanders said Murdo and Bullware were likely amassing the land in hopes of one day selling it back to the government at a profit. A Charleston law enforcement source said he believes Murdaugh's drug operation is concentrated more inland, in Hampton and Colleton counties. It gets more like a season of Ozark every day, someone told the Post. We try to stay the hell away from all of it.